Good morning, everyone. Glad to see so many here to celebrate the life of Christine uh, today. And it is a celebration because she lived her life well. She was prepared to go. And it's a celebration today. And so we want to welcome you here. And uh, I'm sure that Christine, if she was here, she would have a smile on her face and be greeting every one of you. And I knew that she would know something personally about you. <laughs> so today I would like to read about her life. And it was Helen Christine Smock Carl, 91, of Webster, Illinois, passed away at 1135, Sunday, March the 6th, 2022, at her home. Christine was born April the 12th, 1930, to Lee and Margaret Eisnoggle Smock, in Hancock County, Illinois, and she married Harvey Carl on August the 18th, 1946, and together they raised seven children. Mourning her loss are the surviving five children, Elizabeth Joanne and J.D. Shipman of Webster, Janet Elaine, the late Robert Root of Colchester, Illinois, Luann and Joe Pence of Carthage, Illinois, Jerry Allen and Kathy Carl, of Grisham, Oregon, and Donald Kirk and Candy Carl of Nauvoo, Illinois, one son-in-law, Minton Diggs, and one daughter-in-law, Patty Carl. Also mourning her loss are 16 grandchildren, 23 great-grandchildren, 15 great-great-grandchildren, two sister-in-laws, Maxine Johnson of Carthage, and Shirley Carl of Macomb, and many nieces, nephews, friends, and caregiver, Gary Smith. She was preceded in death by her parents, her husband, Harvey, one daughter, Karen Dings, one son, Edward, one granddaughter, Tina Barkley, and one great-granddaughter-in-law, Katrina Carl, and special friends, Paul Powell and Charles Blue. Christine was known for her delicious pies and was nicknamed the Pie Lady. She was a wonderful cook and in the 1990s served many smorgasbord meals in her home. She proudly published three cookbooks. She also held several bake and craft sales at her home and at the annex in La Harpe, baking 150 pies for each sale. Christine always had candy and cookies on hand for her visitors. She enjoyed making homemade bread and noodles and candy pickles. Besides cooking at home, she also worked for a time at Tink's Cafe in Blandonsville and Robert Morris College in Carthage. She was a woman of strong faith and a member of the Webster Community Church. And now we're going to have some, some violin, violin music of two of her favorite songs. <clears throat>
Didn't know today would be our last That I'd have to say goodbye to you so fast I'm so numb I can't feel anymore I'm praying you just walk right through the And tell me that I was only dreaming You're not really gone as long as I believe There will be another angel around the throne tonight Your love lives on inside of me And I will hold on tight Troubles feel so small. And you were always there to catch me when I'd fall. In a world where heroes come and go, where God just took the only one I know. So I'll hold you. In Psalm 31.10, it says a woman or a wife of noble character is worth more than rubies. 
Christine had that kind of character. She was one of a kind. I loved Ruth. I loved her, and uh, she was a ruby and a diamond all together, as far as I was concerned, because I like my diamonds pretty well. <laughs> you know, she never met a stranger. It didn't seem like it. To her, it was just a friend in the making, because it seemed like every time she came in, we became closer and closer friends, and we met at Soupy Q's. And I didn't know her until she came in and started playing me some lottery a little bit. <laughs> She kind of had to, had to get a ticket once in a while. And she was telling me some of the things she did. And we just hit it off. And I guess it's because we both had the gift of gab. And so we just kind of hit it off really well. And I thought a lot of her. And I looked forward to her coming in and visiting with me. And uh, she was telling me at the time that she was coming down in that area because a man had lost his wife. And uh, she was fixing meals for him, and they were going places together. And she was kind of keeping him company. And that's because she cared. And she knew what it was like to lose someone that was your companion for so many years. And how lonely that could be, and how that would get. And also, a lot of men back in those days didn't know how to cook. And uh, didn't cook. And uh, I know my dad was one of those. I mean, he could fix himself some some bread and pour milk over it. He liked that for some reason. I don't know why, but I guess that's, he grew up that way. But anyhow, she would go down and she would eat with him. And you know, it's much, it's much nicer to eat with someone. And his family said once that he was gone that he lived a lot longer because of Christine. And when she'd leave and couldn't come there to cook for him, she had a whole bunch of food that she would cook up and she'd put it in the freezer for him, so all he had to do was get it out and put it in the microwave. And I bet you that it beat any TV dinner that he could have gotten. So, and you know, some people kind of criticized. She was telling me about that. But she really didn't care because she did what she thought was right in her heart. And what she thought that the Lord would have her to do. And you know, that takes a lot of courage. And she had a lot of courage. Also in... Psalms 31, 17, it says she sets about working vigorously. You know, I don't think Christine, in her good days, was ever very idle. She was always doing something. She was either cooking or baking or sewing or creating some kind of craft and or having bake sales or going somewhere, doing something, gardening, canning, you name it. She did it. And she was glad to teach somebody else how to do it, too. She was willing to share those things that she had learned through the years. And, you know, the thing of it is, raising seven children would be hard work. <laughs> and she learned how to do that. And she learned that she had to do some things in order that she could have food on the table for them. And it's no wonder she knew how to cook great big meals and smorgasbords because if you're, if you're raising seven children that like to eat, you learn how to cook a lot of food. And my husband and I got to enjoy a lot of those meals. And it was always fun to go there. And she was always smiling, always laughing, always cutting up with somebody uh, during that whole time that we were there. And you felt like we're very welcome. And she was a woman of hospitality. She knew how to entertain people. She opened her home to anyone and everyone. And she became their friend. She loved cooking and baking. And she made breakfast, I understand, for the men folk in the area for a long, long time. And they would come to her house every morning for breakfast. And gee, I wish we'd have lived closer because I'd have sent my husband. <laughs> But she did that, and she enjoyed that. She enjoyed cooking for them. And I'm sure that they enjoyed her meals as well. And um, like I said, she, she loved to cook. And every time she was going to have a special feast, I called it, she would say, now, you and Raymond are going to come, aren't you? If you are, I need to have your reservations. And I said, sure, we're going to be there. Put us down. And that would then we'd run out there after church, because it was usually on a Sunday. 
And today we've had a, quite a bit of music. We still have some more to go here. And uh, one more song anyway. But anyhow, she loved gospel music too. And she knew that I did. And so every time that her church had a special um, group coming in or so on, she would always make sure that I got an invitation. I'd either get something through the mail, or even if I got something through the mail, she would call me and remind me. <laughs> say, now don't forget to put that on your calendar, because they're going to be really good. They're going to be really good. And of course, we tried to make it as much as we could, because I knew when I got there, I was going to get a big smile and a hug. So... <laughs> We tried to make it as often as we could. I, I got to go to her big birthday bash. She was excited about that. She had little little bracelets made up, remember? And she just had such a great time. And it was so much fun. And she made it fun. And the thing of it is, you know, when we're, especially women, we don't like to tell our age. But... You notice as we get older, we start bragging about it. We're, oh, well, I'm 90 years old now. <laughs> and that was kind of Christine. She was happy and that she had lived so long and that she had so many blessings in her life and so many people that she'd shared her life with and they had shared their life with her. And I, I, we were just talking about it because her birthday was April 12th and mine was April 14th. She says, I'm going to be 92. And I said, oh, man, that just doesn't seem possible that we could be this old. I mean, I'm not 92, but <laughs> still, uh, I'm just talking with her. Hey, how did we get this old so fast? <laughs> because the years fly by, don't they? But I'm reminded of when they put something on your tombstone. They, they put the date that, that you were born. Then they put this dash and the date that you passed. That dash was how many years you lived. That dash is full, yeah. 91 plus years. She put a lot in her dash. And I wonder, how much are we putting in our dash? And how much are we enjoying life? And how much are we sharing life with other people? And bringing joy to them. And Christine did that. It was a full dash. She made the best of it. She made the best of everything. Also, we were talking about how she smiled. And always had a, a laugh to go right along with that. She just enjoyed everything. She was always giggling. And it says in Psalm 17.22, oh, I'm sorry, Proverbs 17.22, a merry heart doeth good like a medicine, but a broken spirit drives the bones. Christine had a merry heart. She always had a ready smile, like I said, and a laugh. And I'm sure that during her lifetime, she had many broken dreams, many heartaches. But she didn't dwell on them. She did not dwell on them. She did not live in the past. She lived for the day. She kept taking good medicine with her prayers, reading the word, going to church, getting close to the Lord that had saved her. She loved serving the Lord. She loved serving others. And she loved Jesus Christ. She loved her family. And she loved her friends. And when you do that, you have a merry heart. And she sure did. And you not also get a strong spirit. And her spirit was very strong. She could take about anything and come out bubbly. I believe that's why that she was blessed with such a long life. Because God let her spread sunshine to others around her. And to give them hope. And to give them encouragement. And I think that's why he said, I'm going to just let you stay there a little bit longer than most. Today, we celebrate her life, and you know what? We're not really celebrating her death, because when you take your last breath here, you take your next breath in heaven with the Lord Jesus Christ. If you have 
ask him into your heart and life. And if you know him, you don't truly die because he came to give us eternal life. She's alive now more than she's ever been. Like the song said, it's hard to let you go, but I know where you're at. I know where you're at. And why would I wish you back? I often thought of Lazarus, you know? Lazarus was dead. His body was dead for three or four days. And he came back and he was crying. Number one, because he was still man. And when we leave the when people that we love leave us, we cry. We grieve. But I think he also had another grief, even greater than that. And that was that he was going to have to bring Lazarus back to a life that still had sorrow and pain and disappointments. And that made him sad because he knew what heaven was like. Jesus knew where heaven, where Lazarus was, and that heaven was a great place to be. And he wouldn't have to face those things. So I think he was sorrowful that he had to bring him back to life. But he went to the cross so that they would have eternal life and would be with him. There was a poem that I found that I thought said it well. A life well lived. A life well lived is a precious gift of hope and strength and grace for someone who has made our world a brighter, better place. It's filled with memories, sweet and sad, with smiles and sometimes tears, with friendships formed and good times shared and laughter through the years. A life well lived is a legacy of joy and pride and pleasure, a living, lasting memory. Our, heart, our grateful hearts will treasure. And you have a lot of memories to treasure and a lot of years to think about. In 2 Corinthians 5.8, it says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So today we know that that is where Christine is today. She's present with the Lord. No more heartaches. No more sickness. No more death. Just joy and peace and love forevermore. And we have all those things in heaven to look forward to ourselves if we know him. And, you know, people think that, oh, when we get up to heaven, they, we're going to sit on a cloud and play a harp and just float around. Well, I've got news for you. We're going to be serving the Lord like we served him here. And he gave us all talents. And I think we're going to get to use them. So I can see Christine, when she got there, she said, where's the kitchen? <laughs> because we're getting ready for the marriage supper of the lamb. And so I need to get in the kitchen so I can make some pies. <laughs> and I can just see her doing that, can't you? I'm sure she's up there making pies, making noodles. <laughs> And making sure we're going to have a good marriage supper of the Lamb. And, the, and you know what? She's not going to get tired of doing it either. And then she's not going to have to worry about it boiling over or it not turning out right because it'll be perfect. And I can see her doing that now. I know my, my mother and her good friend, every time we had a church social, it always seemed like they got stuck with the dishes. So they were talking one day, and they were laughing, and they said, you know what we're going to be doing to heaven? Said, no. She said, dishes. We're going to be doing dishes. <laughs> well, Christine's going to be cooking, <laughs> and my mom's going to be cleaning the dishes. And I remember, like I said, those great dinners that she had at her home and how we were to make a reservation. So she would have plenty. And believe me, she always had plenty. And if you went away hungry, that was your fault. But she said, make a reservation. So I know how many will be there. My question today is, have you made your reservation to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb? 
Have you been? Have you made your reservation to be in heaven with the Lord and with Christine and to eat some of her pies? That's what I'm asking you today. Because you know what? She wants all of us to be there. The Lord wants all of us to be there. And it's such a simple process that even a child can do it and understand. And today, Christine is happy. We might be sad. I thought a lot about it today. I, I said, I don't think, I told my husband this morning, I said, I don't think I can do this. I think I'm going to throw up. I said, I'm so nervous. But I said, I loved her so much. And I wanted to do what I could for her. And I hope today what I had to say helped lighten your heart, lighten your burden, and that you have some wonderful memories that you can cherish. Because that's what we all have, is memories. And the people that have gone on before that we've loved, they're still alive because they're in our hearts, in our memories. And they'll never be dead because we're always thinking of them. They'll never be gone because they're just a thought away. And one day, we'll get to see them again. And that's what I'm looking forward to because I've got a lot of people over there that I want to see again. And they're waiting for me. And like I told Bill, our journey's getting shorter. <laughs> we don't have much, much longer to worry about being here. But I hope that when my life comes to an end, that I have filled that dash with a lot of good things and touched a lot of people with love and caring and concern and reached out to them. So today, we're going to have one last song. And this old fat lady's going to have to go back there again. So give me time to get some breath. And we're going to do this last song, and it's called Wish You Were Here.
Right after the service, we'll be going to the graves site, so uh, get prepared to do that. And today, I hope you are happy that you came to celebrate today a wonderful lady, a good Christian lady, and I pray that you're blessed just knowing her. So let's all bow our heads, close our eyes, and begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day that we could be together, Lord, as family and friends. We thank you, Lord, that we can celebrate the homegoing of this child of yours, dear Lord. We thank you for the many years that you gave her to us, to share, to love, to laugh with, Lord. We thank you for her family, and we pray, Lord, that you will hold them near and dear to you and close to your heart today. Fill them with peace. Fill them, Lord, with wonderful memories. And they will think on these things, and that today they, they know where their mom is where their grandma is, where their friend is. Lord, I just pray that they will realize that she is not dead. She is alive and living still. And I do believe, Lord, that those that have gone on still pray and pray for us, that they will see us again too. Lord, I just pray that you'll be with us the remainder of this day. Hold us in your hands. Keep us safe here, Lord, I pray. And once again, we thank you for your love. We thank you for your mercy and your grace to us. 
We thank you, Lord, that you died for us, that we can have life eternal. We give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen.